All right, so the purpose of this little video is just to make sure everybody is clear on what I'd like for you to uh, include on your lab write-ups for the aspirin lab. So I passed this out in class and so it tells you the components that I'm looking for. You're going to need a title page. And so in case you weren't here when I talked about the title page the other day, let me just refresh your, um, everyone's memory on that and make sure you understand. Your title page should be a page into itself. And so you would put a descriptive title of the um, lab. So a perfect title would be preparation of aspirin because we did not test it. Or you could just say aspirin lab. Then um, I would include some sort of picture uh, in the uh, as a central focal point that has to do with the topic. This will be true for any lab that we do. You to pick a picture that's appropriate for the lab. And then come down here, and this would be a smaller font. Your title font should be a more of a larger, a larger, more um, prominent font. The heading down here should be in a smaller font, and it should all be centered. And it should be your name. First name, last name, AP chemistry, third period, and then put the due date of the lab. This will be the proper title page format for any lab that we do. On the second page of your lab, you will need to include your purpose. Um, and also for this particular lab, since it's an informal lab write-up, um, you will include your results and conclusions. So let's talk about that for just a second. For your results and conclusions and your purpose, um, again, this will be on page two of your lab. Do this in an outline format. And just in case you can't read this very well, I'm going to write over. So you would state your purpose. You want to put the um, the heading purpose and then put your colon and then you would state your purpose of the lab. That's going to count 15 points towards your lab for this part. Um, remember the purpose of our lab was to make aspirin and to determine the limiting reactant and then calculate the percent yield of aspirin. We did not purify the aspirin. Then um, I would double space between the sections here, put Roman numeral 2, and this is where you're going to include your data table. These are the results. So data table results. And then you would, of course, create your data table. I did give you sort of a format for how the data table should look on the little handout. This would be the format they use for your data table, where you indicate the mass of the salicylic acid used, the mass of acetic anhydride, and the mass of your product. So this is your grams actual. Underneath your data table, you're going to show any calculations So you would want to make sure that you determine your limiting reactant and show that calculation. The work can, for, for any um, calculations, you can um, write that in either blue or black ink and then scan it into your um, lab. Um, for the labs that you turn into me in class, uh, you can actually write it on that lab for the hard copy you give me. But in your Google Doc, you can scan it in and then attach it in Google Classroom. Make sure you show your work for determining your limiting reactant. Also, calculating your percent yield. Make sure you show your work for that. Include your balanced chemical equation. Okay, also in this section. Now we did write out the balanced chemical equation in class the other day. Um, in case you were not in here for that, I will show you right here real quickly. This was our balanced chemical equation. Pause the video if you need to, to get everything in. Okay, so here's your balanced chemical equation. Make sure you include that. 
The third and final section, and again, if this takes more than a page, you would go to the next page, but um, the third and final section of this informal lab should be titled Conclusions. In the conclusion section, I want you to discuss specific behaviors that would uh, be reasons for why your group got less than 100% yield. So reasons for why um, you have less than 100% yield. And be specific. Please don't just say human error. Like give specific things that occurred in your group. Give me at least two things, preferably three. Also, in this final section, I want you to answer question number two from your lab sheet. So let me point out where that is. Question two from your lab sheet um, is here. Okay, this is our lab sheet that we use for the procedure. So here's question two. This is what I'm referring to. So the question says, aspirin passes through the stomach unchanged but is absorbed in the intestines. Suggest a reason for this. So I want you to find that answer. And then please make sure you cite your source. Okay, so when you find that answer and answer it, then cite the source. Okay. Just put the link in there with it. Give me the web address. Cite your source for where you found that. All right. So for this informal lab, that will be what you need to include. If there's any questions, please message me in Google Classroom. This lab is due um, uploaded in Google Classroom by 8.30 a.m. on this Friday, which will be the... 16th of February 2018 and also remember the hard copy for me to actually grade and write on is due at the beginning of third period. All right, thanks.